Hello everyone. Welcome to another Monday movie. I'm Mr. Blue Summers. So last week we took a look at some lighting setups for V-Ray in 3D Studio Max. Now this week we're going to take a first look at the V-Ray material system. V-Ray uses a very different paradigm than Mental Ray and the Scanline renderer. Instead it takes a more unified approach where it says all materials are essentially the same and they vary over only a few parameters like reflectivity and the glossiness of that reflectivity and their transparency and the glossiness of that transparency. So today we're going to take a look at how we can create metal materials and glass materials in V-Ray and next week we'll take a look at materials that are based on maps and that use displacement. So let's get started. I'm going to open up my material editor and what I'm going to do is along the top row I'm going to create three metal materials for my spheres and along the bottom row I'm going to create three glass materials for these chamfered cylinders. For this first metal material I've selected a V-Ray material. You can select it right here by clicking on it and selecting V-Ray material, clicking OK. And because this is a metallic material we only need to change the reflection parameters in order to create something that actually reflects the environment. So I'm going to click on my swatch for the reflect and of course we could use a map if we wanted to but we won't in this case. I'm going to set it to pure white and that's going to create an entirely reflective material for me. Now the key parameter for both reflective materials and refractive materials, that's metal and glass, is the glossiness parameter and the subdivisions. The glossiness determines how blurry the reflection or how blurry the transparency is going to be. So you'll notice that as I turn down the reflective glossiness, the glossiness and the specularity start to change on this material right here in this preview. So for this example, I'm going to select a glossiness of one and apply that to that sphere. For the next sphere, I'm going to use the same material, but in this case, I'm going to use a glossiness of 0.9, and I'm going to copy that over as well. And I'm going to do that one more time for the last sphere, and that's going to get a glossiness of 0.8. And you'll notice that they're drastically different. Copy that over as well. Now I'm going to do something very similar for the glass material. I'm going to create a V-Ray material, I'm going to scroll down to the refraction group and I'm going to change this refract swatch from black to white. So this becomes a perfectly transparent material. Now similar to before, we can change the glossiness parameter in order to invoke a substantial change on this material. Watch that preview as I turn down the glossiness. The transparency becomes blurred. So for our first material, we're going to use a glossiness of 1. For our second material, we're going to use a glossiness of 0.9. And for our third material, a glossiness of 0.8, just like the metal. Oops, I need to create an instance, class 3, 0.8, and we'll copy that over now. Now remember that the number of subdivisions controls the quality of the effect. The higher the subdivisions, the higher the quality. The lower the subdivisions, the faster your render will go. Now let's take a render and see how these materials look. As you can see in our metallic materials, as we increase the glossiness parameter, the HDRI background becomes harder and harder to see. Similarly, our glass materials manage to obscure more and more of the transparency as we increase the glossiness parameter. So as you can see, V-Ray gives us a very robust material creation paradigm by giving us two major parameters, reflection and refraction. By adjusting either of these, we can arrive at some very interesting material results. Be sure to tune in again next week when we'll take a look at how you can create materials in V-Ray using maps. Thanks for tuning in to another Monday movie. You can find all of my Monday movies as well as tutorials, resources, and downloads at my website, www.mrbluesummers.com.